Thank you so much for joining us, Geraldine. Um, it would be great to hear just a little bit about your background and the organization you're working with. Well, thanks for having me. Um, so I have a son with Phelan McDermott syndrome. It's a rare genetic condition caused by a deletion on the terminal end of chromosome 22 or by mutation of the shank 3 gene. And so for the last several years, I've been in involved with the Phelan McDermott Syndrome Foundation's research support initiatives. Um, so today I came to talk about our patient registry in which we're engaging families and sharing their children's um, their uh, medical records, their genetic data, and their phenotypic data. And what has that process been like in terms of talking with researchers, figuring out, talking yeah. with families, kind of, yeah. what does that look like? So initially we started because there was very little happening in the research space around family McDermott syndrome, and we didn't really have another place to start. Um, and so a registry was one way we could get started um, without too much expense. And so we you know, really came, grew from the patient community, but we involved researchers in the beginning um, by having them advise us on the development of questionnaires to understand sort of the development and the clinical history of Phelan McDermott syndrome. Um, and we also talked to them along the way about, you know, what do they, what kinds of data do they want to get out of it? And now that we actually have an operational registry, we work with the registry uh, with the research community in that uh, if they would like to access data from us, they can just submit a data access application, um, or sometimes they want to recruit patients for their research studies, and they can come to us and request um, assistance with recruitment mm -hmm. for studies. Mm -hmm. And so it really started with kind of patient and getting that registry started, and now researchers are starting to kind of reach out more. Absolutely. Yeah, it really did grow from, from the patient side. Okay. And we like to think, you know, that we are engaging citizen scientists and right. helping to find cures for their own children. Right. And what has that kind of back and forth now been, now that you have something that researchers want? How do you kind of navigate those relationships? Um, I would say right now, most of the researchers who are interested are people who are working in the Phelan McDermott syndrome space already. Mm -hmm. um, but as we grow, we expect to sort of let more people know about it. And hopefully we grow the field of people who are interested in our disease through making our data available to them. Mm -hmm. What spurred you to start with kind of looking at this registry as an idea? Yeah. Is that you've seen other kind of rare genetic diseases kind of follow a similar, similar model? You know, really where it came from was um, listening to what parents were talking about in social media and what was happening in our Facebook community. Parents were becoming very savvy. They were learning so much about their child's condition and about the genetics and comparing notes with other families. And it really became apparent that parents were really <laughs> the experts in the disease. Um, but really what we were learning, the knowledge from that was really sequestered in our patient community community or in the parent community um, because we didn't actually have a research study. We didn't have an IRB approval, we didn't have informed consent, and without those things we couldn't really use that data for research purposes. And when families went to their doctors, what they needed to be able to show them were research articles and publications saying, look, you know, this is, this is the truth. <laughs> um, just saying, I talked to some other families who experienced this wasn't quite enough to sort of, sort of get the referrals they needed for various tests. Mm -hmm. So it really did grow from from what parents were talking about. And at the time, in 2011, when we launched our registry, there really were very few patient advocacy groups that had registries. So there wasn't really a, a template that we could use. And so the, really the so. whole community has grown around that. And you've really even changed the conversation about how talking to doctors works with research articles. Yeah, I think so. As we become more savvy, we're really looking more to, to research findings. So, yeah. And, and then where is this? where do you see this going in the next few years? <laughs> Um, so I think paired with the kinds of data that we're collecting in our patient registry and the natural history study that we have going, we hope that we're going to be able to um, have some more clinical trials. We have had three, three I believe, three or four in our community and we hope that we'll have more clinical trials and that we can enable the success of those trials by helping match the right patients to the right studies um, and really sort of providing the clinical trials readiness data that we need in order to have those really successful trials. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining yeah. us. Appreciate Thanks for it. having me.